Okay. Larry, you got me, brother? Awesome. Guys, I'm so happy to be with you today in the house of the Lord. And I, I pray in the holy name of Jesus Christ that these songs have challenged you because they've challenged me. Every morning, every, every Sunday morning that we come together and we practice songs of worship to lead this body into worship, we have a worship service of our own as a, as a praise team. And I, I just got to tell you, guys, if you choose not to worship, that's on you. But man, you're talking about when you really come to the know of the Lord and you really understand what he's done for you. It's easy. It's easy to worship your God. Today, guys, I want to I want to begin this message. I I I, I got to tell you, uh, there's been many times as a pastor in, in 20 years of ministry that I was a little bit worried about what I what I was supposed to say. Sometimes you study all week and 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 you just the Holy Spirit's just really not clued you in. He's just really not hammered out the text or the title. And so I, I remember Vicki and I, we would be riding to church, and, and uh, she said, what are you preaching on this morning? I said, don't know. Well, well, uh, we're, we're going to church here. Do you not know what you're going to know? I have no earthly idea. And there had been times that I, I didn't know what I was supposed to say till I took a step and put it on the my foot and put it on the step of the, of the stage and walked up there and God just automatically gave me what to say. And guys, I want to tell you something. The anxiety was terrible. I literally thought it was the big one, Elizabeth. I thought I was going to die because I wasn't in control. You know, everybody wants to be in control. But that's not God. God's in control and I'm the vessel. And today I shared with Miss Gail, I said, Miss Gail, I said, for the first time in ministry in 20 years, I don't know what I'm supposed to say, and I'm not even worried about it because I know God's got it, what he wants me to say. And so today, guys, he's clued me in, and I know what I'm supposed to say for his honor and his glory. We want to begin this, this message with a, a, a past tense time, and I won't reveal names, but there was a friend of mine that his father was dying in the hospital. And so he said, Scott, he, he said, man, can you come, come with me to the hospital and pray over my dad? I said, sure, brother, I'll be there. So he gave me the room number, and I went up to the hospital, and I began to pray, and I just, there was a darkness. I just felt this darkness in the room. And so we had prayer, and we asked God to deliver him. To heal him, but if not, to, to take him without a lot of suffering. A few moments later, he tugged on my arm and we went outside and he said, Look, man, he said, My dad didn't believe in God. My dad never went to church. He said, I just want you to know that I appreciate you praying over him. But he said, even I kind of felt like that was a lost cause. Now, guys, the next, next hour or so, this man began to really, really struggle in death. It's like he was holding on. He was fighting for every breath. He was fighting for everything that he could fight for to stay here. Why is that? I don't know if you've been around that very much or not, but I've seen people when they are dying, they begin seeing through the veil. They begin seeing into the spiritual realm. And they can see the greeter that stands at the foot of the bed. I've seen it. And sometimes they see things that they don't want to see. Why? Why? Because it's too late. It's too late. 
You see, biblically, we're under the misconception that any time is, is a great time to meet God, that we can wait and we can wait and we can wait, and God will never turn us down. But that's not biblical, ladies and gentlemen. That's not so. Today is the day of salvation. If God is calling you to a saving faith in him, you better take him up on it. In Jeremiah chapter 15 is where we'll begin. I've been in Jeremiah, and uh, if any of y'all caught the podcast yesterday, i got to tell you about that. Jordan, uh, we're starting the, the podcast of Coffee with the Pastors back again. And so we were merely trying to set up the board and get it working yesterday. And he said, hey, we're on the air. We better do something. <laughs> so we had us a little segment there of the podcast. And I thought it went very well. And you can hear a lot better. And so, uh, guys, if, if you want to, we'd love to have you tune in and, and uh, ask questions or so forth and so on. But tune in and support the podcast because we're going we're gonna to talk about some great things. But Today we're going to talk about this in Jeremiah chapter 15. I want you to look at a certain verse. Verse number 6 of Jeremiah chapter 15. Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee, and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. What is that description of? What that describes, ladies and gentlemen, is a soul that will not commit to the honor and the glory of the Lord to a life of faith. They want their cake and they want to eat it too. They want to live this life as they want to live it and in the end have God take up the slack. That's what they want. They don't want to be held to a standard that God held his own son, Jesus Christ, to. Now think about that. If God himself, if Elohim himself held Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, to a standard, why would he not ask the same of you? Yeah, but that's not the way we react. We play games at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. We commit this fraud against the Lord. We tend to use our Lord and Savior not as a companion, not as a leader, but a bellhop and a lawyer. Maybe a doctor every now and then. Oh, God, I need some new tires for the car. Oh, God, I'm sick today. Oh, Lord, I made a mistake here. I need some help getting out of this. But that's the only time that we want to talk to him. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand who God is. It's your breath you're breathing. It's his breath you're breathing, not yours. He's given you a life, but he can take it back. We have too many people calling themselves Christians and have no idea who they're dealing with. God is so loving. God is so giving. Let's talk about the justice of God. You want to play games with God? Let's talk about Noah. Noah built the ark. It wasn't a sea ark. It wasn't a ranger. It wasn't a bass cat. It was an ark. It took him 120 years to build this ark, and then all of a sudden these animals began showing up just like God said they would. And all the people literally scoffed him to death and told him he was a madman because he was building a boat. 
He was building an ark and he kept telling them over and over and over and over again, there's going to be a flood. God has said it. Kind of hard for him to believe. Why? Because it had never rained. If you'll consult the scriptures, the, the, the God watered the earth with dew and springs of the earth. Never had rain before. But then the day came that God said, Noah, get your sons and your, and your daughter-in-laws, your wife, get in that ark. Those, those animals are going to be there. They're there. They walk into the ark. Notice this, ladies and gentlemen. Noah didn't say, hey, boys, let's raise up the gangplank because he didn't shut the door. Guess who shut the door? God shut the door. God did. God did it. God's saying enough is enough with your stupidness, your ignorance, and your non-repenting, your non-belief in me. I'm not going to put up with it anymore. You want hell, you get it. You want it, you get it. It's not a joke. Or you think all these people are in town and they're scoffing at, oh, Noah, look at that idiot. Done went in there and got in that boat. And then all of a sudden, boom, 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 what is that? That's rain. Wow. Let's get in out of the rain. The next thing you know, it's still raining. Water is up to here. What'd they do? They grabbed those infant babies and those little toddlers and they went out there to that ark and they said, we believe you now, Noah. We believe you now. But it kept on raining and that door never opened. Can you literally picture in your mind a mother holding her child above her head trying to save its life? And God said, no. No, that child is mine already, but you're not. You see, we, we don't, we're playing games with God. God's pretty sick of it, don't you think? Especially in this last day. You know, we were talking the other day about the, the great revival that's supposed to happen at the end here. What's the great revival? Do you think, guys, are, are, are we foolish enough to think that all of a sudden this Holy Spirit's going to come back that's already here? The Holy Spirit's already here. This Holy Spirit's going to come back and everybody's going to stop their whoredoms. Everybody's going to stop their cruelty. Everybody's going to stop giving up their babies. And, 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 and just don't even go there, Scotty. And everybody's just going to stop doing wrong all of a sudden, and we're all just going to come to the cross. Do you really think that? No. Let me tell you what's going to happen. There's going to be a great revival, but it's going to be people deciding on whose side they're on. That's what's going to happen. God's fixing to put it to you. He's fixing to bring you to the crossroads of what you believe. Man, the other day I got, I got somebody... Come in on, on the internet and told me that I, I, I preached through intimidation. No, honey, this ain't intimidation. Get you some of it. Burns me up. They don't read. They don't read. All they want to do is complain. Listen, honey, feel good gospel disappeared a long time ago. Real gospel's here to stay, and it's the only thing that's going to lead you to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You need to get a hold of it. Amen. Here we are. People playing games at the foot of the cross. You don't think that's true? Romans chapter 1. Woo, we're going to get ugly here. Ah, y'all get ready. All of y'all that don't read the Bible, uh, ooh, you're fixing to get smoked. And it ain't from me. It's from the big daddy up above. Romans chapter 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God. Verse 1, 
which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and he declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the treasury by the resurrection of the dead, by whom he have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are, you're also called Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome. Beloved to God, called, called to be saints, grace to you, peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for y'all that your faith is spoken of throughout the world. This church is renowned. It's renowned. People know the faith of the church at Rome. Paul saying thank you. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers making requests if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. I want to see you. Now let's, let's, look. let's go on down. Verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to slow down our reading. We got to get this. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. It's powerful. You see, brother and sister in Christ, listen, if you've never given your heart and life to Jesus Christ, you don't know what you're dealing with. You don't know what power is going to come against you. You have no earthly idea of the, the magnificent power of Jesus Christ. A man that as he hung on the cross could have literally called 10 million thousand angels and smoked everybody here with a word. A word, not an action, a thought. It's hot in here. <laughs> Whew. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith that is written to just shall live by faith. Listen, you start little bitty steps and then you get bigger steps as you go. God, God answers your prayer and you say, wow, God, well, that's awesome. Then you trust him with something else. Guess what? He, he provides. He goes again. He proves over and over. He's God. He ain't scared to prove it. You're scared to commit. He ain't scared. You are. We are. God's not scared. We are. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Whoa, 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 whoa. time out. For the wrath of God. Wrath. See, we're under this impression that God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Yes, he is. But don't think he doesn't have a just side. God has a just side. Every tear you cry, he weighs and measures. And he repays that tear to whom gave it to you. You can't do that. But he can that's justice. We catching this? Listen. God's good. And when someone offends you and you are broken, guess what? He says it's better for them to have a millstone tied around their neck and be cast into the bottom of the sea than for anyone to mess with one of his children. Don't think he won't pay them back. Because he will. He will. He's just. And he's going to fight your battle for you. He will take up for you. Whew, we better get on. I ain't going to last. I'm going to have to have some water, bug. If you got, if you got some, I'm going to have to have some. Because that which made me known, well, you've already drank out of that. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. I'm going to put it to you. Some of you dads that's been in a delivery room. Okay? Explain that one for me. 
disregard what she said in pain. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> what we're saying is the miraculous birth of a beautiful human life coming from the womb of the woman. We can explain it scientifically. But sometimes we can't explain why it doesn't happen. Right? We can speculate. But if it wasn't God, if God didn't have anything to do with it, then why doesn't it happen every time? Now, you think about that. Why doesn't it happen every time? Well, I don't know. Guess what? The medical profession really don't know either. They know how to prevent. We know how to take precaution. But without all that, why doesn't a child, every single time it happens, happen? Oh, you see, God must be in the equation somewhere. Because understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't believe in God, you are without excuse. You are. It's because you are suffering from willful ignorance. That means you don't want to know. You're like the dad that sends his daughter off to college. How you doing, honey? Fine. What have you been doing? Don't want to know. I trust you. Y'all think I'm wrong about that? No. Don't want to know. You're going to make your own mistakes. I don't want to be mad at you. Some of y'all get that. Some of y'all are like, what? Quit micromanaging. Let your child be a child. Not saying don't be there for them. But you're not, going, you're not literally going to make every decision for them either, ladies and gentlemen. You're not. They're going to make their own. The kids probably all think we're asleep because y'all are really quiet in here today. <laughs> because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. In other words, what, what are we talking about here? They did not acknowledge God for who God was. Life is life. It's my life. YOLO. I, you only live once. I'll live my life the way I want to. Then right before I die, I'll ask God to save my life and I'll go to heaven. No, you won't. No, you won't. That's not what the Bible says. You're fooling yourself. You've not studied. And when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to hold you accountable for this book. Why? Because it is him in the word form. Jesus Christ in word form. This is him. This is, you talk about a timely message. Lord God, you are God. I'm just going to tell you. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. People that do not acknowledge God. Now, let me tell you something. We're fixing to get into something here that's going to divide a house. I'm going to be on God's side. Just going to warn you. If you don't want to sit through it, I don't want you to leave. But don't let it hit you where the good Lord splits you. Just going to put it out there, honey. 
professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and they changed the glory of an uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. What did they do? They, they suffered in idolatry. They forgot God, and they themselves claimed to be gods of themselves. Hollywood, we're all gods. How many of y'all have heard that on the, on the television? But we're all gods. No, we're not. We're the creation of one God. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Do you think some peoples went overboard in the lust department? Now, guys, this is going to get a little bit uncomfortable here. Let me tell you something, men. A lot of preachers tend to call this about homosexuality and lesbianism. But let me explain something to you. If you're a skirt chaser and you're out here committing adultery on your wife, you're just as guilty as they are. You're wrong. Ladies, if you wait for your husband to go to work so you can unlock the door for somebody else, you're wrong. You are. This is not a joke, ladies and gentlemen. God doesn't like that. He don't want that. It's uncleanness. It's immorality. And Jesus died to save you from it. And you're taking that cross and you're walking on it. You're stepping on it. You're, you're cursing it in the ground. God is not going to put up with it. He's going to hold you accountable. You need this preaching like this. You need to get it right. Whew. Man, I'm glad I didn't know what I was going to say. Oh, I would have never practiced this one. Oh, Lord. I don't think I could have been through two of them. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature, me, more than God. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I am a poor excuse for a human being. I am a poor excuse. I can't hold it together for 24 hours. Can you? Can you literally go 24 hours without sinning against God? Can you? You can't. If you say yes, you're a lion. You're a lion. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile afflictions. What is he talking about? God gave them up. God quit. God quit striving with them. God let them go. He let them go. Oh, God, here I am on my deathbed. And I've stole, I've lied, I've cheated, I've took money, I've committed adultery on my wife. But here I've got two more breaths left, and I just want to get into heaven. God, hey, hey, God, hey, you listening to me? God. Where'd you go? Oh, you're not supposed to be here yet. Do y'all know what it looks like when an unbeliever dies? I've never seen anything so, so scary, pitiful, and heart-wrenching in my life. I have witnessed people Saying no, no, no. A lot of us here don't even believe in heaven and hell. You're just here at church. So let me explain something to you, ladies and gentlemen. It's real. I've witnessed it. It's real. And if you'll open your eyes, you'll witness it too. 
There's no such thing as a peaceful death when someone is lost. There's not. There's a violent spiritual death. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. We're going to leave that right there. We're going to leave it there. We could get into that, but guess what? Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That ain't mistranslated. That's not, that's not a mistranslation. Matter of fact, that's actually a dated signature there. For in the latter days. That's what it talks about. What does that mean? That means if God is calling you to be saved, you better listen. You're in the latter days of humanity. There is such a thing called the rapture of the church, and I can preach on it till the cows come home. And guess what? Well, uh, it's not ever happened before. Guess what? It's only going to happen once. Never did flood before either, but it did. Whew. This is a tough crowd. This is hitting home. Receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. What are we talking about? In other words, they're going to get what, they, what they're given. They're going to get paid back. God is a just God. You are not going to take the cross of Jesus Christ and mire it in any shape, form, or fashion because it was the perfect sacrifice for those who would believe. And just because you don't believe it, let me tell you all something. I saw one of those parades on television one day. And the guy was dressed up and he, act, he put himself up on a cross like Jesus Christ. I would hate to be that fella. I would literally hate to be that fella and stand before God. Because you have made a total mockery out of something that was very beautiful and very sacred. He had no idea. And that's the problem is he had no idea. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave, gave them over to a what class? A reprobate mind. Reprobate. What does that mean? That means you've gone so far that God is going to let you have what you want. That's what it means. There comes a time when God says, enough's enough. I'm done. I have called you. I have pleaded with you. I've given my only begotten son. I have loved you through it all. I still love you. But I can't do anything for you because you don't want me. That's what he's saying. You don't want me. So guess what? I'm done. I'm going to give you what you want. That little prayer that you said earlier in the church when you were seven years old, guess what? It didn't mean very much, did it? Yeah, we're still hinging our Christianity on that, ain't we? Guess what, ladies and gentlemen, don't do that. Paul said, work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. That's, that, that, that don't, if there ain't no fruit, there ain't no faith. And if there ain't no faith, there ain't no salvation. For salvation is grace through faith, according to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Grace through faith. Not, it's, not grace through, it's not grace through that prayer you said when you were seven because you were scared of going to hell. That ain't it. Is your life producing the fruit of God? Because if it's not, guess what? You're not saved. If there's no fruit, there's no faith. If there's no faith, there's no salvation. You're on your own. I'm trying, brother. I'm about to run out of steam. 
It says, look here. To do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness. Fornication, yeah, we test drive everything before we buy it now, don't we? Ooh, boy, we didn't want to hear that, did we? Yeah, can I get an amen, honey? Amen. Hey, yeah, yeah. Wickedness. Oh, yeah, we there covetous. Man, I had a guy tell me one time, man, I, I wish I, my wife was like yours. I said, man, you don't know what you're talking about. You got a good wife. He said, yeah, but yours is a lot better to you. I said, that's, that's around you. Wait till she gets around me. <laughs> we, laugh, we laugh about that now, don't we, man? I do have, I am blessed with a beautiful, wonderful wife. I am. But yeah, he said, my wife, don't do that to me. I said, well, don't send her to the store without no money. With a, with a check that's going to bounce and embarrass her at the line. Or a card that ain't going to work. Don't ever do that to her, man. Quit embarrassing your wife. Be there, but man up. Man up, be there. Come on, man. You're supposed to be the man of the house. Earn that respect. Don't demand it. Earn it. Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder. Don't know if you hate your brother, that's the same thing as murder. Hatred. Hatred's the same thing as murder in the eyes of God. What did it say about Leah? Jacob had two wives. He had Leah and Rachel. The Bible says, if you go back and read this account, it's one of the most amazing, beautiful stories of, of, of the Bible. But Leah and Rachel, Leah was the older sister, Rachel was the younger. Jacob was in love with Rachel. He loved the younger sister. So he asked the, the father for the hand in marriage, and guess what? He said, okay, you can have her. So Jacob goes in and he marries her. Well, he gives her Leah first, gives him Leah first. He says, well, I, I wanted to marry Rachel. He said, sorry, man, the custom is you give the oldest one before you give the youngest one. So he had to work seven more years so he could buy Rachel. She probably wasn't worth the seven years. I don't know. That was supposed to be funny. <laughs> but he didn't love Leah. And the Bible says she was hated. Hated is the same word as murder. But God opened up Leah's womb and he closed Rachel's. Rachel had two children. Joseph and Benjamin. But Leah had the rest. And when Rachel died bearing Benjamin, Leah stepped up as a woman of God and she raised Benjamin as her own. And in the end of the story, when Rachel died, Jacob buried her where she died in the field. But when Leah died, he had come to a knowledge of God that Leah was the, God, was the wife that God had chosen and Rachel was the wife that he had chosen. And he said, you take Leah back to the family plot where my fathers, Abraham, Isaac, my forefathers, you take her back there and you bury her because she was a gift from God. Murder. Hatred. Debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God. Oh, yeah, we got that, don't we? Everywhere we look, the church is persecuted. Persecuted over everything that we believe. We're hated. Guess what? That's the reason. Don't get your hopes up for this big worldwide global falling out, coming back, come, the whole world turning back to God. It's not going to happen. There are going to be people, there is, there is going to be a huge revival. But the, the fact of the matter is, it's like this. People deciding who's on who they're going to believe. They're going to quit walk riding the fence. But this world is going to head right straight on down the road to hell. Just like it's going. It's going to go so fast and so far that God is going to come and he's going to rescue his church. It's called a rapture. And when the Holy Spirit and this church come out of this place, all hell's going to break loose. You better, 
Go to reading. Go to reading. That's when the vials, that's when everything begins. That's when the white horse walks in with the Antichrist on top. If you want to, if you want to study it, come on. I love it. Despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things. Okay. Disobedient to parents. Man, I did everything my mother and daddy told me to do. How about you? Yeah, you just asked my mama. I got news, y'all. My mama could haul pulp wood. She could slap your teeth out and slap them back in your mouth faster than you could think. And she could do it in Walmart. It didn't bother her at all. That's right. But she did it because she loved me. Without understanding, and that's where the world is. Guess whose fault that is, guys? That ain't theirs. That's ours. That's ours. We have failed as a Christian church to spread the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Y'all know what's happened? We, we, our bodies have been split up, and we've been, we've been, we've been, we were talking about it the other day. We were talking about it on the podcast yesterday. T.D. Jake said that denominationalism is where your belief stops with God. Do y'all know that's true? Certain people believe in sprinkling. Some, certain people don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Some people are so far that they're, that they're actually, uh, what do we want to say, uh, uh, abuse of the gifts of the gospel. They go so far as to, 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 to make a mockery of it. Well, we're all divided. As a body, we shouldn't be divided. One church goes over to the park like, like we're going to do tonight. We're going to go to the park, and we're just going to spread the love of Jesus. Guess what? There ain't another church going to come join us because it might add to our church. Are you thinking about this? Oh, yeah. We can't go help somebody else. Well, we might help their church and not help ours. Really? And what kingdom do you belong to? Oh boy, this is this is this is ugly today, isn't it? Without natural affection. Mm. Y'all know what natural affection is? Not loving your kids. Not loving your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Natural affection. Natural. I'm going to tell you something, guys. I witnessed a dad that whoops on that young one like he's supposed to be whooping on. But when he, when he is not disciplining that son, he's loving that son every other moment. He's out in the yard playing catch with him. He's getting him a boat to shoot. He's got him a a fishing pole to fish with. Every moment he's spending time with that son and that daughter. Why? Because he loves them. He's willing to give up his time and be the dad. Give up his time and be the dad. Listen, listen, brother and sister in Christ, there's a huge difference between a dad and a donor. There's a big difference between a dad and a donor. You know, the donors all show up when they make it to the probes, don't they? You ever notice that? They there when somebody else has done, done all the work so they can capitalize they ain't no dad. I've witnessed it all my life. Implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that which that they which do which commits such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. He 
see, ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. Don't be thinking that you're going to play with God because you're not. What most of you don't understand is that you're rejecting the greatest life that you could ever be involved in. That's what you don't understand. Satan's got you fooled. He's got you blinded. And you're literally scared to death that you might actually miss something. See, here's the problem you haven't read. What did Satan say? What did Jesus say? God said this. He says, the thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's you. He's coming to rob you of everything you got. If he can, if he can steal your marriage, he's going to. If he can make you commit suicide, he's going to. Whatever that God blesses you with, he's there to take away from you. And God says, no, 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 no. I come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. Yeah. I want you to have that life that only I can offer with beauty and blessing and true love. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you do not understand love until you understand the love of Jesus Christ. You cannot. You cannot fathom love in the right way until Jesus Christ has placed his love in your heart. When he does, guess what? You understand what true love is all about. Guess what? It ain't about you. It's never been about you. It's never been about me. Isaiah 43, 7, we were created to bring honor and glory to God. And on that path, guess what? God blesses us with everything that we desire. He said, delight thyself also in the Lord. He will give thee the desires of thine heart. God will give it to you. But you got to quit playing games first. And number two, You better come when he calls. Today is the day of salvation. It's when he decides, not when you do. Caitlin, y'all ready? Let me ask you something, church. I remember one day my dad called me from over at my buddy's house, we all had a big sandlot football game going on over there. Well, I didn't want to come home. We were winning. We were winning big. And we were smoking the other team. And I really had a lot of fun rubbing their nose in it. You've been there. Yeah, we've been there. And Dad said, Scotty, you need to come home. Finally, he drove in his truck over there to get me. He said, come on, get in the truck. We got to go. Dad, I don't want to. I don't want to. Okay. He went home. When I got home that evening, he said, man, he said, sure wish you to come home. I said, why is that? He said, well, I had something for you. What? What was that, Dad? He goes in the house picked out my new shotgun. Guess where this one's going? My room. No. It's going back in mine. But Dad, no, you don't understand. If you can't do what you're told, you're not mature enough to own it. It didn't, how much, it didn't matter how much I cried. He would not relent because he knew. If the Lord's calling you to salvation, 
brother, sister in Christ is because he's got something for you. Not only is it eternal life, but there's blessings that only he can bestow, that only he can give. There's protection that only he can give. He sees you don't. He sees you don't. Today, as bad as I hate to say it, For some of you going to tighten your lip and you're going to tighten your hands on the back of that chair in front of you. And as quick as you can get out of here, you're going to run from the love of God. The greatest thing that you will ever know. The love of God. But some of you are so afraid that you're going to have to change. Guys, you got to understand something. There is a reason why God's asking you to change. He never does anything that's bad for you. He's always here for your good. If he's asking you to change, if he's trying to get you to commit to him, there's something coming your way that he don't want you to have to deal with. The greatest thing that I ever did in my life was follow Jesus. God's allowed me to see some great times. God allowed me to marry the love of my life. God allowed me to be there in the delivery room. I want you to give birth to the three greatest blessings of my life besides Jesus. He's answered my prayer. got a war out camper but we got a Cummins we got a Honda that's dirty because she won't wash it and if I left here in the next 10 seconds I've had everything I wanted because God gave it to me My life has been so full. I never meet a stranger. I got more friends than I can remember their names. People come up and say, hey, man, you remember that time? No, I really don't, but don't tell nobody. (laughs) I have been blessed. It's all because of the Lord. If you know you need to be saved and be true and be real, ask Jesus in your heart. We're not here to play games anymore. Playing games will cost you eternity. Eli, can you turn those lights out? You don't know how Ashley can. It's a switch, baby. It's hard to reach. (laughs) 
Guys, we're not going to stand for a few, few moments. We're just going to let... I want Caitlin to sing this song. Because here we are one more time. God pleading with us. Will you meet me here again? Have you met the Lord? Let's bow our heads, close our eyes.